What I thought would only happen in sci-fi movies actually happened in reality? A Google engineer claims that the AI chatbot developed by Google may even have a soul? Mm -hmm. Oh, gibberish. Or is it still possible? Hello, and welcome to the ICRT News Flash. I'm Nancy Sun. We have a recent survey on artificial intelligence conducted by ICRT. Without a doubt, AI is a growing part of our everyday lives. According to our very random survey results, 100% of respondents out here have their arms wide open for robots. But a lot of the people surveyed had negative perceptions of AI, believing it will lead to unemployment, social alienation, or worse. AI becomes an uncontrollable evil and takes over the world. Although I'd say that is very unlikely to happen, what kind of AI would want to take over the world like an old-fashioned Sadako? Despite some unease towards AI, over 50% of people surveyed wanted robots to do their daily chores. Some respondents would like a robot friend, and some expect medical aid from it. It looks like humans think AI equals to robots. But you know, I think AI is used in so many other ways, you know? However, can you believe that less than 1% of people surveyed wanted to use AI for profit? Who says human beings are greedy, right? That's all for Newsflash. Thanks for watching. Long story short, artificial intelligence is a computer science aimed to build smart machines which are capable of performing orders and tasks that typically require human intelligence. I am so conflicted because I am lazy, so I want AI to do plenty of things for me. But on the other hand, I am afraid this smart stuff can replace me. There is no time for fear. I have to be strong and let the smart stuff know who the boss is. But I can't do this on my own. I need that weird dude to assist me. Let's see. Uh, where are you, Chuck? Pandora! A moon far, far from our own, less for the vegetation and wildlife, and a brain. It thinks and plans. It stores memories and reacts to pain. It is intelligent. For many years, people have been trying to build machines that can think for themselves, too. This is called AI, or artificial intelligence. Now we have computers beating chess champions, autonomous cars winning races, and robot chefs cooking in kitchens! The Mayflower, an AI-controlled ship, has just successfully sailed from the UK to Canada completely on its own, over 4,400 kilometers. But could a computer win this show? Let's find out! It's a network, a global network, and the Navi can access it. They can upload and download data, memories. But can you? Welcome to the show, everybody. My, oh my, what a bunch of chatbots you all are today. I'm your host, Chuck McSilver. Let's meet today's contestants. Everyone, please welcome Joseph and for the first time ever on TV, the Quizmaster 3000! This week, we're putting the intelligence back in artificial intelligence and finding out whose brain works best, a man's or a machine's. Check out our AI terms. Asimov's Laws, Deep Learning, Processor, Autonomous, Chatbots, Neural Networks, Turing test, expert systems, machine learning. Contestants, it's up to you to find those words. Fingers on buzzers. Here's your first clue. A machine able to function on its own without human assistance. Autonomous. Fictional rules designed to ensure the safety of artificially intelligent machines. As a mob's laws.
No points for you yet, Joseph. It looks like the machines are going to win this one. Not quite, Chuck. Hey, Quizmaster 3000, can I ask you a question, please? Of course, the Quizmaster 3000 is programmed to answer all human questions efficiently and correctly. What exactly are Asimov's laws? First law, a robot may not injure a human being or, through an action, allow a human being to come to harm. Uh, guys? Second law, a robot must obey the orders given it by human beings, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. Guys? Third law, a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. Okay, back to the show. So, as long as nothing gets hurt, you have to obey my orders? Affirmative. Okay, give me all your points then. Guys! It is done. That's the end of the round and we have a winner, I think. Ah, huh, wait. That actually worked? With two points to nothing, Joseph takes the prize. That's so cool. What else can I make it do? That's all we have time for, folks. Thanks to our... Get me a sandwich. Whoa. Where was I? Oh, yes. Thanks to our guest and... Get Chuck a thousand sandwiches. Oh, th thanks to our guest. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Oh, I'll take that one. Bye-bye. Hey, before you go, don't forget the Asia Silicon Valley Development Agency and the NDC are here to support any ideas you might have for building your own clever robots and cool machines. Search online to find out more. Oh, had I known that sandwich was going to be so dry, I should have ordered some steak or, you know what, ribs. Oh, don't worry about Chuck. He's going to be just fine. He totally deserves it. But you know what? I still know very little about AI and what are its capabilities. Maybe you too. But luckily today we have an expert to answer all these questions. So let's go find him right now. Hello there, I am DJ Joseph Lin and you are watching English with Experts. Now the topic that we're going to talk about today is something that you probably have heard of every day since like 20, 30, even 40 years ago. It's called AI or artificial intelligence. We're going to talk about what exactly is AI artificial intelligence. Is it used just on robots or is it really around us every day now? We'll figure that out because we also have a professional in the room with us to answer all these questions. But before we get to the topic, uh, the introduction, I would like to thank NDC, National Development Council, for pushing forward the bilingual 2030 policy. Hopefully soon, Taiwanese will have a better command of English, and we look forward to that. Now, speaking of NDC and AI, did you know that the government actually established a plan called ASVDP? Okay, that stands for Asia Silicon Valley Development Plan. And now it's gone to 2.0 because 1.0 was a great success. This plan will actively introduce 5G, AI, and other digital technologies, encourage the export to the global market, and accelerate the startup growth and exits to make Taiwan a key innovative power in Asia. Now I've heard that Siemens has been a member of the plan since the beginning and has witnessed the innovative power of Taiwan's technological development. Luckily, we got the expert from Siemens here to answer all the questions. He is the vice president of Siemens Taiwan. He's also the general manager of Digital Industries Taiwan. Please welcome to the show. It's simply Adi. Thanks a lot, Joseph. Yes. Thanks a lot for having me here, and I'm really happy to talk artificial intelligence with you today. It's my pleasure. Now, you come from an extensive background of technologies, or I mean, how did you end up here? Right. How, how did I end Siemens? up in Taipei? Right. I mean, I've been working with Siemens since 2008, and I've been involved in various functions at Siemens, right from sales, marketing, strategy, business development mm -hmm. in various countries. I've worked in the U.S., in Europe. And this is actually my second time in Taiwan. So I've actually headed our machine tool business in okay. Taiwan, okay. in Taichung, for three oh. years. All right. And I've been here now since the last two years, heading most of our automation businesses. Oh. And AI, actually, is one of our key technologi uh, technological trend topics, which we at Siemens are discussing with our Taiwanese customers yes. each and every day. Yes. So really happy to talk that with you Oh, today. no, my pleasure. And obviously, you're doing the right thing. And now you're the vice president of Siemens here in Taiwan. Let's talk about AI. I mean, right. I've heard that term since I was little. Um, right. 
to be honest, I was a computer science major. All right. So I had a lot of experience with AI back in the early days of the 80s and 90s, which right. is quite different. Or yeah. should I say the definition of AI is much different right. than it is today than, let's say, you know, 50 years ago. When people talk about artificial intelligence, they think of walking robots coming now, taking over the world. Absolutely. Um, and there's still that worry today, but tell us about what AI should be. AI is actually each and everywhere where you look at it today. Just take right at the start of your day, I mean, on your phone, uh -huh. your assistant, Siri, right at the start of the day, that S is a digital Siri assistant, Siri is not right? real, Siri is or not real, Siri's it's AI. Not, or every morning when I'm turning on my Alexa and say, Alexa, play yeah. ICRT, and that is a sort of AI again. Right. Or, or just imagine your social media feed. Why do you think that you're exactly seeing that on your social media feed? what you want to see mm. that is again a form of ai mm. and now coming towards the industrial space yes again here ai is probably being involved in the manufacturing and production of each and every product you've probably touched today or worked on with today mm -hmm. not just high-tech stuff my favorite example is just frozen pizza that probably also had a bunch of ai somewhere there's enough intelligence in a frozen pizza to drive a, a car today. Is that Not, what you're saying? <laughs> sort of. Not exactly. Okay. But just take the example of a frozen pizza, right? right I right. mean, when you're, when, you're, when you're buying a frozen pizza, you probably want your pizza salami to be placed exactly where it had to be, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. And, and with artificial intelligence, the manufacturing lines uh. in the inspection, inspection stage are having very smart detection variants to make sure that this is exactly in that place where it needs to be. Absolutely. And this is of course helping production to be more faster. Yes. Production to be more reliable. That's true. And production to be more sustainable, which is what mm. at the end of the day we want in industry. A lot of AI has to do with big data. Today. Let's take one step back. I mean, let's okay. see what's really the definition of AI. Okay. I mean, AI probably is a it refers to systems or machines okay. that are mimicking the human brain mm -hmm. and are in a continuous way able to get better in an iterative manner. Mm -hmm. All this, of course, depends on data. Mm -hmm. The more data you have, yes. the more know-how you get on the processes. Mm. And all this data then gets fed into algorithms. Mm. And these algorithms are then also constantly optimizing themselves mm -hmm. and making decisions. That is why big data is absolutely necessary in this whole process of AI. That's another thing. A lot of people are afraid that as we give and feed these machines with more data, that it's going to develop emotions now. Right. It's something really complicated, and as a human being, I still don't understand a lot of my emotions. Emotions probably not. I mean, you probably have seen a couple of movies from Hollywood where yeah. there have been cases where AI is getting emotions. Right. But I wouldn't really worry about emotions. But, mm. but the one topic which I absolutely encounter when I'm talking to my customers mm -hmm. is they're getting scared sometimes. Mm -hmm. is, is AI going to sort of take over the world? Is AI going to take yeah. over my job? Yes. And there is an absolutely definitive answer to that. Mm -hmm. It is no. So AI is not there to take over any jobs. I mean, of course, I understand the anxiousness which are there in the minds of people. Yeah. But AI, at the end of the day, like I said, depends on data. Right. Data which is fed into algorithms, which are then programmed and optimized mm -hmm. by experts. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about how Siemens is active in AI. Can you give us some examples? Right. Siemens itself has been active in AI for more than 30 to 40 years. I mean, we have identified AI as one of our key technological trends from a very early stage. Mm -hmm. But we do believe at Siemens it's, it's in something called AI with purpose. What does that mean? The first thing is we believe that it has to bring impact to wherever we are using it. So our customers should not just say, I want AI because it, it sounds fancy. So that is not something we do. The second topic, especially because we are in the industrial space, it has to be reliable and it has to be robust. Because a lot of times, some of the places we are implementing AI as Siemens is really mission critical. And these are places where you do not want to make it fail. Right. So we really needed that AI where we are implementing in industry is robust and reliable. And finally, we believe that the AI we are implementing should be bringing a sustainable value yes. for future and for society. Right. 
at the end of the day, yep. it's still the people that are Absolutely. creating this AI, that are controlling this AI to making people's lives a lot better. So tell us about the AI Talent Initiative. Since 2007, in fact, for the first time, Siemens has already been working on this topic around education and industry, where we in fact brought some of our dual education systems of Siemens, of, of, from Germany together with our Siemens in-house uh, training topics into Taiwan I've been, and I've been working with a lot of schools here in Taiwan on this topic. Finally, since 2020, we even further intensified our collaboration. So since 2020, we have been working with not only the Taipei City government, but also the National Taiwan Technical, National Taipei Technical University, yes. and also the, uh, the Taipei Shongshan uh, Municipal High School. Right. And we have been bringing, in fact, AI to their curriculum. Yes. So the young students there now have AI right. in their curriculum, right. but they also then get to work on it in real life. Right hence getting a real feel for this. Right. So like you see, we are up to a lot of stuff and training young students and young people is definitely one of our top priorities yeah. as Siemens in Taiwan. Thank you for your time, Adi. No problem. For speaking to us and talking about AI so that people can learn more about it and also hear it in English so that we can improve our English at the same time. Thanks a lot, Joseph. Happy to be here today with you. My pleasure. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And also thanks to NDC, National Development Council, for uh, these series of English with Experts. We'll have more in the future. You can always log on to www.icrt.com.tw to check out all the latest. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. I am DJ Joseph Lin, and we will see you next time. Bye.